Welcome to another edition of Show After the Show. I'm Rob Dempsey. Along with us today is one of the people that makes our community so great. It's Tony Fajaro, and he is from Ben Lippin School, which I'm so grateful that you're spending time with us today. Well, thank you, Rob. Thank you for taking the time to uh, meet with me and for having this conversation. Well, your story is so fascinating to me because one thing that you say is that you're born in Cuba, but you're American by the grace of God. Amen. That's that's one of the things I've carried with me for a long time. Uh, I'm truly am grateful, uh, first of all, for loving parents, but more for a loving God that gave me the opportunity to come to to the United States and uh, explore my options and my opportunities and freedom and, uh, and and get to raise a family in this country. The way that you, you got to America just seems like a movie to me because your dad did everything that he could to get you and your family to the States from Cuba. That's correct. And, and again, I'm blessed for, for a, a father who sacrificed so much during that time. Uh, you know, growing up in Cuba, uh, you, if, you, know, you could imagine the challenges that are there being under a communist regime, uh, socialist environment. A uh, very poor place to grow up in, uh, but my dad uh, always had a dream, and the dream was that when he had children, he wanted to get them to freedom, and give them the opportunity. And I had two older sisters; uh, he was not able to get them out as quickly as I, as as myself. Um, but my dad was imprisoned under the Cuban regime uh, for several years uh, because he spoke out against communism and spoke out against that those challenges, and so. Uh, growing up during that time, when I was born, uh, my dad said, I, I need to get my son out of the country. Uh, my grandparents had left uh, Cuba already and had moved to the United States right before Fidel Castro took over. And so uh, he went through several, several challenges in getting us over to the United States. And, uh, and one of those challenges was the idea that he had to be able to make choices. And uh, one of those choices was the idea, do I put my son, uh, send him through the embassy and just hope that he can get to the United States? And on the other side, my grandparents would pick me up. And uh, before he made that choice, he just he prayed and said, Lord, what is the right choice here? Uh, my parents were of Catholic belief at that time. They weren't Christians. Um, but one of the chance that the things that he said is he just couldn't do it. He had to take a step back and could not do it. Um, we moved forward from that. And then another opportunity was. Uh, early, uh, late 1970s, uh, early, uh, right before 80, uh, my dad and my mom uh, really had the opportunity to jump on a raft and get us out of Cuba uh, across the ocean, which is a travel that many Cubans have made and not been successful over the yeah. years, as many stories have come through, uh, where many have died in the ocean, unfortunately, just seeking freedom. Um, again, the plan was set, they were going to go and he just could not do it. He just felt that was a better way. In 1980, during the Morel boat lift, um, the Morel Harbor, uh, Fidel Castro opened up the Morel Harbor to let anyone that wanted to exile Cuba and leave to the United States. He had a goal in mind during that time, and that goal was, first of all, to clear his prisons and send everyone out to the United States during that time. And so those are the first people that boarded the boats. And then those that wanted to leave the the, the island uh, could also jump on the boat. And that was another option for my parents. Uh, but my mom got on the boat and my dad was holding me. And at that moment, he just couldn't do it. So he got my mom off the boat, uh, waited. And that was 1980. In 83, we received a visa from the United States uh, to travel freely to Costa Rica. We felt we stayed there in Costa Rica for a year, waiting for an additional visa. And we came to the United States and I celebrated my sixth birthday in freedom. Wow. Amazing. All between the ages of five and six, this epic story <laughs> that's in your life. But that even continued. I mean, you, you grew up, you went to school. Uh, there was a teacher that noticed how athletic you were. Absolutely. And, and you know, the challenges started before that. Uh, and the blessing was the teacher himself. But, you know, one of the challenges for us was obviously the language barrier. My mom and dad uh, didn't know any English. They worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week to put food on the table. I remember the stories of uh, even going with my mom on Saturday mornings as a six-year-old uh, at that time to the shopping center to move carts around, which people do today uh, to get paid for that. But my mom would get a dime for every cart she'd pick up from the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I would help her do that. And then I also remember the buses dropping me off at the local hospital where my mom worked. And my mom cleaned bathrooms and floors there to try to help the family out. And 
the way I learned English, and I still cha have challenges sometimes, even as an adult, but the way I learned English and how to write and spell were because the doctors and nurses at that hospital spent time with me when I got there after they had already put a full day's work in helping me do my spelling words, helping me write my paragraphs while my mom was cleaning the bathrooms. And so I have a, a, a tremendous passion for those that serve in the medical field mm -hmm. uh, because of the impact they had on me. But moving forward to that and then in the local public school, here's a young man who struggled with language all the way through. But there was a, a, a physical education teacher that took the time to impact my life. And uh, George Statisitis, Mr. T, we used to call him, uh, spent some time with me, uh, saw some ability maybe that I didn't see. Uh, came to my home. Uh, that's what back in the day when teachers knocked on doors and spent some time in homes, uh, came to the door and just shared in broken Spanish with my parents. I have an opportunity and I think Jesus can make a difference. And uh, and he took me to uh, the local school that he was his church was a part of and introduced me to a few folks. And that opportunity, the doors opened where we were able to go to a Christian school there locally. Oh, amazing. I understand that something happened to you in eighth grade when you just kind of walked out of a classroom. And this is why, <laughs> Rob, this is why I try to show you people I was Cuban born, but I really American by the grace of God, because I feel like God had a plan for my life. Uh, these things don't work out uh, the way they work out if God doesn't have a plan for my life. And uh, in eighth grade in that Christian school, uh, I remember sitting there in Bible classes and I remember the uh, my life had already been impacted by a Christian man, a teacher. Um, and here I sat in a Christian school and each day I saw what I call now as an adult and as a leader of a Christian school, living curriculum teachers, uh, a teacher who lived out their faith each and every day in the classroom and in the hallways. And I saw something different in them that I didn't have in my life. And I wanted to know what that difference was. And so I remember in eighth grade, uh, getting ready to leave class, had my bag with me, uh, getting ready to walk out the door. And I turned around in the hallway, came back to the teacher and said, I just want to take a little bit of your time. Can you tell me about the Jesus that you know? And that's how I came to know the Lord. Amazing. And it was a teacher. Fast forward, here you are, the headmaster of Ben Lippin School. And there was one day that you saw a faculty member notice that he was working with a, a struggling student that had a lot of challenges. Hmm. Every time I walk the hallways of Ben Lippin School and my time in administration, I always pay attention to the communication that's happening between teachers and students. And, it's, and I pay attention because my life was impacted by a teacher. And when I see teachers and students having conversations, I always look for that impactful moment. And at this time, I sat out in the hallway and just observed how a, uh, a regular teacher was having a regular conversation with a student who I knew was having challenges at home. That teacher didn't know that student was having challenges at home, but that conversation turned into a time of prayer. Uh, and that conversation turned into a time of a teacher uh, just telling a student, I'm here for you if you need me. Later on, that student came back around and, uh, and, and, and thanked that teacher. And that student came back. And by the end of that year, by the time he finished here, uh, he was able to, first of all, he had an opportunity to know the Lord. Um, his life completely changed around. He got some help where he needed some help with. Um, and to this day, he'll come back and thank that teacher for that opportunity and that conversation. And you remembered that so well because you walked through those shoes of a student. That's correct. I, oh, made, that, I made that connection because that, that reminded me of who I was when I was a young person. Yeah, Tony's from uh, Ben Lippin School. You can find more information about enrollment and open house that happens every day. You can request a personal tour uh, and uh, and see what Ben Lippin School is all about. We've got the links right here available for you on the show after the show page. We're going to have another episode with uh, Tony coming up here very soon. And thank you for joining us for show after the show. We'll see you next time. Yeah.